This is Nadia Tolokonnikova. She is part of a Russian punk rock collective called Pussy Riot. In 2012, she captured the world's attention for staging a protest against Vladimir Putin in Moscow's largest Orthodox church. Since then, Pussy Riot has continued using performance art to oppose political repression in Russia. People like me are labeled as um, extremists or terrorists. Nadia is now actively using cryptocurrency to promote her cause. The video of her music single, Panic Attack, sold for over half a million dollars as an NFT series in 2021. I wanted to bring a large, um, large human rights and charitable component to NFTs. In Cointelegraph's latest interview, we talked to Nadia about how Pussy Riot is using NFTs as a tool for achieving social and political change. So, first of all, Nadia, I'm curious, how did you take your first steps in crypto and in the NFT space in particular? I was always something into that section of uh, culture and tech, because I believe that activists have to learn about what's going on with technology in order to be effective. So um, I have a group of friends who are pretty deeply involved in um, <clears throat> the NFTs uh, since, well, since late 2019, um, maybe earlier. And um, so I've been hearing lots of great stuff from them. And that's how I got involved. I dropped my first NFT in March uh, 2021. And the reason why I decided to become active in the space was I wanted to um, I wanted to bring a large um, large human rights and charitable component to NFTs because I quickly realized that <clears throat> it's a space where people are open to hearing your thoughts. It's really flexible. Um, it's um, it's a new, it's a relatively new space, so it's why you can actually establish precedence with uh, your own behavior. And initially, I was pretty hesitant about entering the NFT space. There's a lot of activists um, for various reasons. My main reason was um, homogeneity of the space. Um, so, due to various historical reasons, Crypto is mostly owned by men, um, by white men, by white heterosexual men. And those are not my demographics. Unless I need a dick, I don't really interact with them. So uh, I had a hard time um, actually entering the space because I, I was thinking how I'm, going to, um, how I'm going to fill within that community. And then I started to connect with um, various groups of like LGBTQ plus groups and uh, women in crypto space. Um, and we talked um, about them promoting their activist issues um, um, for, for a while within crypto space. And uh, then realized that actually it's just, uh, it's like that from the surface. And the statistics right now is unfortunately really, um, really daunting. But, um, but we can, we can change that. So I decided that I'm going to join to um, make the statistic better and um, um, maybe in the future onboard more women and uh, LGBTQ plus folks into the space. So what would you say is the main utility of crypto for a political activist like you? Um, there are a lot of reasons why, um, why an activist would want to use crypto. I, I think first is because crypto um, it's a great tool to transfer money without being controlled by the government, if you don't want to. Um, and there is a problem with uh, um, interacting with financial system uh, when you're living under an oppressive government. So I'm from Russia and I'm fighting with uh, my government for the last, uh, say, 17 years, um, more than half of my life. Um, and it's becoming harder and harder for us to, um, to fight with the government uh, because they're using everything they have um, to, to oppress us, including financial tools. 
Um, so it's not even difficult to raise money when you um, when you are critical to your government in Russia. But also, it's um, it's even difficult to use money that you already have in your bank account because often uh, your bank account would be frozen uh, because you are labeled as a terrorist or extremist by um, the court decision. So legally, technically, everything is right and legal. And technically, according to the constitution, they're protecting people from um, dangerous subjects as myself. So people like me are labeled as um, extremists or terrorists. Um, so it becomes really difficult to deal with uh, any um, infrastructure, logistics. So, uh, but we need to build something on our own and uh, definitely crypto um, has been a great tool to transfer money. So there is that. Um, but also for um, raising money, um, I mentioned it's difficult to, to even have, uh, have money as an activist in Russia, but it's even more difficult to raise money uh, because one of the tools how our government oppresses us uh, is uh, frightening, uh, frightening individuals who want to donate money to our cause. Um, effectively, if you donate any sum that is considered as a large sum, which could be even $500 to, to my cause, you can be considered an extremist as well in my country. So if you don't protect yourself, if you don't encrypt um, in, uh, this interaction, then um, you're fucked. And so we don't want, we don't want our supporters to suffer. That's why um, for a while actually, so yeah, I've been asking you about um, how we used um, how we used crypto before uh, before NFTs. So that's how we've been using it. Uh, we for a while we have uh, ETH and Bitcoin um, wallets on our website, um, so people can donate um, anonymously. I believe that um, you're not you're not going to be an effective activist if you don't have global network of uh, supporters. Um, well, and this is true for my movement. So that's how we rolled for, since day one. But um, crypto gave us tools to actually empower ourselves and um, reach a much bigger amount of people than before. So talking about NFTs specifically, you uh, became uh, very much involved in the NFT space since the start of 2021. And in March, you uh, sold uh, NFTs in order to raise money for victims of domestic violence, women that were victims of domestic violence. Can you tell us about that initiative? How did it go? Um, it was called Panic Attack. And uh, it consisted of four, four pieces. Um, and the first ever piece um, went for 100 ETH. Um, it was Amir Mon uh, Mondo who bought it. And then total um, price of uh, four pieces was 178 ETH. So that's how we entered the space. Um, so we raised uh, quite, a, quite a large sum uh, for uh, domestic, domestic uh, uh, shelter for victims of domestic violence. And we were able to transport a lot of women outside of Russia because the shelter was located in one of the southern republics of Russia. I cannot name the exact one because um, because of security reasons, because of safety reasons. So I'm sure that you were raising funds uh, for social causes even before NFTs. So what is the novelty here? What is the advantage the NFTs bring uh, for this kind of fundraising uh, purposes in, uh, in social political activism? NFTs are um, opening up us to new capital because we have large amount of supporters, but um, most of them, they don't, they don't own a lot of money. So crypto space is a really interesting space because um, not everyone, but a lot of people who happen to be early adopters in crypto, they care about the world. They care about how the future is going to look like. Um, they don't think about what's going on, uh, how, how are they going to enjoy their money today? But uh, they also think about how they're going to enjoy 
um, how future generations are going to enjoy this planet in 100 years from now. So it's a really pretty incredible community of people who at the same they they, they own a large amount of money because they um, they just bought Ethereum or Bitcoin when um, when it cost used to cost nothing, and at the same time they care like a lot of them care about activist causes. So um, that's that's the new development. So. We can say that Pussy Riot's activity is at the intersection between political activism and art and performance art. So we talked about the uh, political and uh, the, the, activ the activism side of that. Now let's talk about the art. How are NFTs useful for your art? To me as an artist, it's really valuable that digital art for the first time was uh, actually recognized as valid art. I know that there's been um, there's been some um, digital pieces exposed at museums and galleries before, but generally, as an artist who works only with digital assets, since the very beginning of my career, I never I never got I never produced any physical piece. Um, so just had really hard time communicating to museums and galleries like where's where's my value as an artist if I could not bring anything physical to the gallery. And this uh, NFT movement um, made me feel seen and happy and supported because um, it connected me with other uh, other digital artists and just exposed me to this community of other people who um, experienced the same problem and also at the same time exposed us to a community of collectors who see real value in art, in digital art. Now let's address some of the concerns around the NFT space. So I'm sure that you know about uh, all the concerns regarding the environmental problems caused by NFTs, the uh, energy consumption that is involved uh, with the creation of NFTs. So what is your take on that? Well, there are a lot of NFTs. Um, there are ways to mint NFTs on different blockchains and you don't necessarily have to pick Ethereum. You can mint um, on Tezos or Solana, and they use proof of stake, which is much more environmental, environmentally friendly. Um, a concern with Ethereum is a very valid concern, and uh, that was a big, it is a big question to me when I just started using Ethereum um, as a blockchain to uh, mint my NFTs on. Um, what I decided is there's a question most it's a, it's not really fair to um make artists responsible for that um i think it's a question to the fossil fuel industry and it's a question to the way how we extract um extract energy as as humanity and as an activist i am committed to working on switching to renewable sources of energy and um, also, besides that, I know that Ethereum is going to switch to proof of stake and they have it in their roadmap. Now, um, you're not using NFTs just to promote uh, single causes. You're also actively building your community within the NFT space. And this community is particularly focused on LGBTQ plus people and women. Can you explain what is the purpose of this project? The problem that we're trying to solve is a problem of representation of women and uh, LGBTQ plus people in the NFC space. We believe that uh, we're still pretty early um, in this space. We actually have, um, have chances to change it um, dramatically. So our goal, um, our goal is to change, uh, change the statistics of uh, um, and when it comes to NFT sales, uh, between, um, when you compare women and men, uh, maybe you remember um, a month ago, NFT now posted this terrible statistics that women are women artists are accountable for only five percent of all NFT sales throughout the last year. Um, it's really sad. It's combined both of uh, women's work uh, being cheaper. And also, women are not um, not participating equally with men in this space. Um, and 
uh, the goal of Pussyverse is going to be to change that. And we're going to see, um, it's going to be really interesting to compare the statistics uh, in a year from now because we're super serious about um, making this work. And it's going to be a combination of onboarding more feminine LGBTQ plus folks in the space and also at the same time working with collectors, not necessarily not necessarily women and uh, LGBTQ plus, but uh, collectors can be whoever, whoever, like we are going to work with uh, male allies as well. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to compare statistics. Obviously, we're not the only player who is trying to change it. But um, I think if we combine our efforts, we really can change it um, and establish a new paradigm in this space. Because um, it, when it comes to traditional art world, it's, um, it would be pretty much impossible for just uh, a comparatively small group of people to try to change the whole landscape. But the NFT world is still so small. I feel like with a good enough effort, you can actually change it. Okay, so that's very interesting. Can you give us more details about this DAO that you are building and uh, how you are concretely going to achieve the goals that you mentioned? Um, we didn't announce anything yet for, for a reason because we want to um, do a lot of work behind the scenes before we announce um, the structure of it. But right now I can just state that we have intentions um, of creating this um, DAO um, for women and um, LGBTQ plus, Q plus people. Um, this is going to combine um, already established artists uh, in the space and um, up and coming artists. Um, it, basically, um, I, I think the closest, um, you can get a taste of what it's going to be with what I'm already doing. Um, if you take a look at um, Pussy Riot Twitter, I highlight quite often um, new artists coming into the space who I personally help to onboard, tell them about MetaMask, Coinbase, how you establish that, um, paying for their gas fees, because as you mentioned, they often can be really expensive um, to kick off their journey in the energy space. And another part of what I'm doing is um, trying to find collectors for them, because initially, initially I was just uh, jumpstarting um, their journey into the space, and then I saw a couple of times that there is not there is no enough interest, and it I think it's a combination of two factors that uh, most of the collectors they're still men and uh, they're really into brotherhood, which is really good. So I, another part of my job is to find. Um, empathetic collectors, um, either men or women, doesn't matter, who actually can, um, can feel that and support up and coming um, female artists. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I've been doing so far. Um, and um, we're going to continue to work on that. Uh, but I want to scale it because I think um, these efforts that I've been doing for over the last year, um, they're nice and valid but you know like one person only can change that much so we're going to hire the whole team um, who are going to create educational materials for girls who want to enter the space uh, and uh, um, people who are going to be just some um, problem shooting if someone has uh, any technical questions uh, and also you know another another part of our effort is to find collectors and now another another concern regarding the uh, NFT market specifically. So a lot of people are saying that uh, it's a big it's a bubble and that the market is overheated and that it cannot continue like that for much longer. It will eventually crash. So are you not concerned that if that happens, then um, you won't be able to use NFTs as that uh, efficient method for for fundraising as before? It's possible. Um, you know, you don't you never want to put all your eggs in one basket and we have uh, other ways to raise money for our activism um i don't think you should only hold everything just in one place um but um that's been said i'm positive that the value of art is not going anywhere and that's why i'm focusing on working with real artists i personally love to focus on community building and on creating great art and I think in the long term, these two, um, 
these two are going to be long-term time investments. Um, and I never really cared that much about money. I cared mostly about building good community. And if money are going to follow that, good. If they don't, that's, that's fine with me as well. <laughs>